Good evening, everyone. I'm Jonah Boudreaux. Thank you for tuning in to the THCR radio this evening. Up next, we have our next segment of Bradley Manor. This week's episode stars Maggie Martin, Cindy Brasca, Andre LaFleur, Joey Mills, narrated by Lucas Gilbo. And with a special guest, me, your announcer. And now, without further ado, this week's segment of Bradley Manor. Secretary. Well, what does it say? What does it say? Read it, you fool! Victoria, please! There is no need for frustration. Roderick, would you please read the letter aloud? Of course. <clears throat> to the family of Mr. Ephraim Z. Bradley, it is with a heavy heart that I deliver news that no family wishes to hear of a loved one. I regret to say that Mr. Bradley has passed away. <gasps> no! My dear Ephraim! Oh, Father! The circumstances of his death are, in simple terms, mysterious. The last I saw him was at our final meeting with the bank. We discussed business as usual over a lovely dinner of rabbit, prosciutto, cabernet, as well as... Dear God, we don't care. Skip ahead. Right. <laughs> ah. It was only after the harlot crashed through the window onto the street below that I realized Mr. Bradley was no longer in the room. I figured he grew weary of the excitement and retired to his chambers. In the morning... I knocked on his door to tell him the car was ready for him. There was no answer. I let myself in to find him lying on the bed, dead. The room was in perfect condition, and his bags were packed. The only suspicious oddity was a single red rose left in his hands. The rest of the letter expresses his sentiments. I am terribly sorry for your loss. Oh, my Afro! How terrible! Dead! Gone! Does it say anything about the will? Who cares about the will? My father is dead! Yes, it does 
does say the conditions of the will. Mr. Bradley has kept the fortune in the family, of course. Oh, heavens! Good. I would hate for his hard-earned fortune to fall into the wrong hands. I will personally make sure that every cent is spent, saved, and invested with the best of intention. Actually, madam, it says here that Mr. Bradley has left everything to his daughter, Margaret. She is his only flesh and blood left after all. What? But I am his wife. This is ridiculous. This isn't how it's supposed to be. I mean, I wasn't expecting him to leave millions in the hands of a mere child. Child? Victoria, do you forget that I have just celebrated my 18th birthday? Yes, madam. Margaret is legally considered a grown adult capable of handling such affairs. A very beautiful grown adult, I might add. <laughs> this is ridiculous. I should be the one left with millions. You, you must have planned this in order to gain his inheritance. Are you suggesting that I murdered my father? Yes, you little... Madams, please. There is no need to fight like this. We are all distraught over Mr. Bradley's death. I think it best we all take some time to arrange our thoughts and feelings before things get out of hand. <sighs> Roderick, what do I do? <laughs> shh, shush, my darling. It will all be all right. What if Victoria is right? What if he was murdered? How can I live with the mystery of his death? If he was murdered, we will avenge his death. But until then, you now hold a great deal of responsibility. Your mind needs to focus on that. But I don't want the great deal of responsibility. I don't want to deal with business affairs and politics. I only want to live happily and simply. Roderick? Yes, my darling. Let's run away together. What? Oh, yes, let's elope. We can use my inheritance to run away. We can get married and live in the countryside away from all this nonsense. Margaret, you know that you and I can never be together. We are from different circles. Your family will never approve. What family? Father was the only family I had left. And I certainly don't care what that cruel and vicious Victoria thinks of me. We run away. We can be together forever. Oh, Roger, please say yes. My darling. You're right. We are both miserable here, living in secrecy. Let's do it. We'll run away tonight, under the cover. Of nightfall. Oh, Roderick! Oh, Margaret! <laughs> what? What is this? Bartholomew! My betrothed, what are you doing here? Oh, I came as soon as I received the letter from your father's secretary. I felt that you would need some comfort, but I see you have already found comfort in the arms of another man. You creeping! Fortune, the house, the stables, all of it. Oh, 
only need enough money for travel to London where Roderick and I will be married. Oh my! This is so unexpected and not at all what I have planned to happen today. Oh! With this sudden change of circumstances and transaction of funds, I, 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 I suddenly realize that I love you, Victoria! <laughs> Radio signing off. Good night.